In this video, I want to find out whether the average person should upgrade from an M1 Pro chip to the latest M4 Pro. At a high level, this has been a very meaningful upgrade. Everyone on the internet has declared that this is the year to upgrade. I am a little skeptical. I've had this for a couple of weeks now, and I've broken it down into three simple categories for everyone to follow and decide for yourself whether actually, for an average person, is this actually worth the upgrade? Let's get into it. First of all, let's get all the differences or rather the similarities out of the way. It's the same screen size, the resolution, albeit this one can get a little brighter, well, twice as bright as the M1 Pro. But let me tell you, it's cloudy out there and there is no chance in hell I'm taking a brand new laptop out of my bag in a park somewhere in London. Not going to happen. It's the same dimension, ports. This one has Thunderbolt 5. But like I mentioned with the brighter screen, most people have shitty cables and no one's going to be spending 400 pounds, great British pounds, on an SSD drive which is compatible with the Thunderbolt 5 and the faster speeds. Majority of the average people are not going to do that. Now, for an extra fee, as always with Apple, there is an extra fee. You can get a matte screen like this. Here are a couple of comparisons for you to look at to decide whether the extra £150 is worth getting this screen for. My boss seems to think I'm blind and he thinks the original screen is better. I love it. And you can see why in this comparison, right? The glare is completely gone and I love it. And finally, the other big thing that they're giving away for free this time around is a 24 gig memory upgrade. With the M4 Pro chip, you now get eight extra gig of RAM for your Chrome browser to eat up. And finally, there's the M4 chip, the reason you're here. This chip has been labeled two times faster at every task compared to the M1 Pro. I wanna dive into that claim. I'm testing this 2X claim, twice as fast claim, in three categories. One, the everyday tasks. Number two, everyday specialized tasks, which is my job. And number three, every now and then specialized tasks, which is YouTube and what I do for YouTube. Let's see how it does. So what are these everyday tasks? Well, these are tasks that me and you have to do every day, whether it's at work or home, browsing the internet, going on Slack or MSN Messenger or Zoom, hopping on a call with a beautiful background while still working, pretty much everything that every normal person uses a laptop for. Now, is the M4 Pro faster at these tasks? Maybe. I mean, is it noticeably faster than the M1 Pro? I couldn't notice the difference between these two M1 and M4 Pro chips. Sure, it might be faster and the benchmarks say that it's faster, but opening the browser, watching Netflix, Zoom, Slack, Teams, all those things are just as fast and I haven't noticed the difference. This brings me to the specialized tasks. Now these are tasks that are specialized, hence the title, but these are tasks that only you and I can do in our particular industry. For example, in my industry, I have to write code on a semi-regular basis and do a lot of other things. Is this laptop going to help me write code two times faster than the M1 Pro? Before I get into trouble, let me break it down a little bit. So there are three things that I do when I'm writing code. One is I use AI to write code, which is already fantastic. Number two is I have to do some testing on it. So maybe go on the browser and test out the code that I've written. And the third thing that I have to do is 
write some tests which would test the code that I've written in the first step that I said. The first one, it's not really going to help me with because AI is already fantastic and not much else you can help me with. Browser testing or like manual testing, again, it's not something that the M4 Pro chip will excel at. Maybe it might do if I have to spin up a lot of different things on my local computer and local machine, but I don't want to get into that. And the third and final one, which is running some tests locally on my machine. And so I ran a comparison between the M1 Pro and the M4 Pro. And the M4 Pro is 40% faster at running a test suite on my machine. Basically, for my specialized tasks, it's 40% faster. Not twice as fast. 40%. Finally, this brings me to what I'm doing right now. Videos and editing videos. How much faster is Final Cut Pro? Is it twice as fast? Well, I exported the same video twice on the M1 Pro and the M4 Pro. And yes, the M4 Pro is faster, but it didn't export the video in half the time. It only exported it maybe 15 seconds quicker than the M1 Pro. You notice 15 seconds? I mean, I can wait 15 extra seconds and have the M1 Pro. Doesn't make a difference when it's that small a number. And majority of the people will be moving from the M1 Pro to the M4 Pro. Not everyone can afford the M4 Max chips. So that is the test that I did and a little underwhelmed by the short gain that I've had in the M4 Pro. Now, there is another test that I did with Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro 11 now has magnetic masks, which apparently uses AI, not apparently, it does use AI to figure out the subject, the landscape, the body of the object that you're trying to mask, and it will clip that item for the entirety of that video. What I was surprised by is that actually on the M4 Pro, it is almost twice as quick at doing the magnetic mask than the M1 Pro. That is surprising. So yes, the M4 Pro is twice as fast in some things than the M1 Pro. But is it twice as fast as the M1 Pro in everything else? Not really. I'd rather have quicker export speeds for Final Cut Pro than the magnetic mask, which I'll be using every now and then maybe. So that brings me to my final thoughts around the M4 Pro. Yes, it's the same speed, in my opinion, as the M1 Pro when it comes to doing everyday tasks. Yes, it's 40% quicker at doing some specialized tasks that I do on a day-to-day -day basis for work. And yes, it's quicker at doing my video editing workflow or Lightroom workflow for photos and videos, but it's not twice as fast. So as much as everyone else on the internet has been raving about the M4 chip, and maybe they've only tested the M4 Max because majority of the influencers get M4 Max from Apple because they want to test the latest and greatest. They're going to give them the best amount of memory, the best amount of storage space, whereas us normal people can't really afford that. So for an average person who's going from the average M1 Pro to the average M4 Pro, the difference isn't twice as fast, it's fast. So this brings me to my closing thoughts and whether or not I recommend you upgrade to the M4 Pro if you have the M1 Pro. Short answer is no. It's not twice as fast at most things. It is twice as fast in a few things. And if those are the few things that you do on a daily basis, then you're probably going to get the M4 Max chip and not the M4 Pro chip. The average everyday person like me and you is likely going to upgrade from M1 Pro to the M4 Pro. And at that point, the difference is there. I can see it. The numbers are saying that yes, it's faster, but it's not twice as fast. And at that point, maybe you should think about not upgrading to the M4 Pro this time around and wait for the M4 5, M5 Pro. And those of you who are looking to get the M4 Pro or a first MacBook in the M series line of chips, maybe consider an older model, maybe the M1 Pro, M2 Pro, M3 Pro, 
just saying, they'll be cheaper than this one because it's just, it's just come out. And unless you need this matte screen, you might find better deals for the M1 Pro chip secondhand. So think about that. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this rant about the M4 Pro. I'll see you in the next one.